The anime begins with a glimpse of Songchai City, still showing marks from a past demon attack. Later that evening, Wang Ling is seen at a small roadside eatery, ordering a bowl of ramen for dinner. After the recent demon assault, both the government and the people of Songchai had worked together to repair the damage in different parts of the city. Wang Ling felt relieved that he could finally live the peaceful life he always wanted. However, just as Wang Ling was about to start eating using special chopsticks designed for his immense power, he was startled by the sudden appearance of a monstrous demon attacking nearby. Some demons had survived Wang Ling's destruction of their world and had now entered the human world seeking revenge, causing chaos. Quickly standing up from his seat, Wang Ling intended to eliminate the demons. But before he could act, someone else had already attacked and defeated the demon. Although Wang Ling couldn't make out the person's identity, he could tell it was a girl, judging by her appearance as she acted from a helicopter. Choosing not to dwell on the girl since the demon's interruption had postponed his dinner, Wang Ling decided to continue his meal. The next day, Wang Ling's classmates, Chan Chao and Guo Hao, were observed examining their school building. At the same time, their friend Lin approached them, questioning why Chan Chao and Guo Hao were lingering in front of the school instead of attending class. Guo Hao then explained to Lin that their school building should still be under repair due to the demon attack incident. However, it was confusing that the renovations were surprisingly quick, especially since the school building looked unchanged, as if it had never been destroyed by the demons. The scene then shifted to a few days earlier when Wang Ling asked the demon frog to stay in the school backyard because the demon world had been eliminated, preventing the demon frog from returning home. At that moment, Zhao Yi suddenly visited Wang Ling, urging him to quickly restore the school building so the students could resume classes for the new semester. As a result, Wang Ling requested the demon frog to manipulate time with his power. Due to excessively exerting his power to restore the school building to its original state, the demon frog immediately felt weakened, and his body became emaciated. In the present, Guo Hao asked Lin about her current living situation because Lin had previously lived at the school. Lin then revealed that she had reunited with her older sister, Jian Lin, and was now living with her sister in the sword's graveyard. Shortly after, a luxurious car pulled up in front of the school building, and soon Rong stepped out, accompanied by her bodyguards. At the same time, a helicopter landed on the school grounds, and a girl descended along with her bodyguards. Lin and the other students watching immediately assumed that the girl must come from a wealthy family, similar to Sun Rong. Before long, Wang Lin finally arrived at school, unfazed by the lavishness displayed by Sun Rong or the mysterious girl. Upon seeing Wang Lin, Sun Rong quickly approached him and linked arms with him as they walked together to their class. In the elite classroom, Sun Rong and her classmates discussed the enigmatic girl. Chan Chao speculated that the girl was not from their country, a notion supported by Guo Hao, who recognized the symbol on the helicopter. It turned out that the symbol belonged to the Jugong family from Taeyang Island, well known as Demon Slayers. Meanwhile, the mysterious girl entered the elite classroom, and one of her bodyguards introduced her as Jugong Langzi, explaining that Liangji was an international student exchange student, now enrolled as Sun Rong's new classmate. Meanwhile, Liangji, who seems to be familiar with Sun Rong, challenges her to a duel. Liangji appears to be aiming to take over Sun Rong's position as the school's most popular girl. She even schemes to expel Sun Rong from the school, believing that there's no need for two wealthy and popular girls. This arrogant behavior of Liangji irritates Sun Rong. They get into an argument until Pan Xinchong steps in and directs Liangji to go back to her classroom. Unfortunately, Liangji finds herself placed in the regular class, feeling embarrassed for challenging Sun Rong, who is in the elite class. Liangji then scolds her bodyguard for not conducting proper research before her enrollment in the school. Liangji actually understands the school's decision to place her in the regular class due to her family's status as demon slayers, often looked down upon by cultivators. Aware of the recent frequent demon sightings, Liangji is determined to prove that the Jugong family are the top demon slayers. She even plans to rise to power to enhance the Jugong family's reputation. However, before accomplishing that, Liangji must defeat Sun Rong and become the school's most popular girl. Meanwhile, 
Her bodyguard is seen begging for Liangji's forgiveness for disappointing her. However, Liangji refuses to pardon him and imposes severe punishment by taking his life, striking fear into her other bodyguards, especially after declaring that she won't tolerate even the slightest mistake. Feeling frustrated by Soon Rong's rejection of her challenge, Liangji coincidentally notices Soon Rong alone with Wang Ling. Seizing the opportunity, Liangji plots to use Wang Ling to pressure Soon Rong into accepting her challenge. She approaches Soon Rong and Wang Ling, who are on their way to the cafeteria, bringing along Wang Ling's favorite snacks to catch his attention. Soon Rong assumes that Wang Ling wouldn't be interested in Liangji's offerings. However, to her surprise, Wang Ling, attracted by the limited edition snacks from Young Island, Liangji's hometown, eagerly approaches her. Seeing Wang Ling's keen interest, Liangji also tries to provoke Soon Rong by flirting with Wang Ling. As expected by Liangji, Soon Rong becomes enraged and eventually agrees to her challenge. Knowing Soon Rong's exceptional talents and skills in various areas, Liangji suggests a cooking competition. After some time, the cooking showdown between Soon Rong and Liangji began. Guo Hao, serving as the host, introduced the competitors, revealing that Soon Rong had many fans supporting her while Liangji only had her bodyguards backing. However, undaunted, Liangji remained confident in her ability to outshine Soon Rong in the competition. Later, Guo Hao appointed Wang Ling as the sole judge for the cooking contest. As the competition started, Liangji quickly showcased her culinary skills, skillfully handling food ingredients and kitchen utensils. On the other hand, Soon Rong seemed confused, struggling to decide between oil and soy sauce and even failing to operate the stove. Cooking was completely unfamiliar to her as she had never done it before. Noticing this, one of her bodyguards discreetly assisted Soon Rong. Despite facing challenges and even causing a small fire, Soon Rong received covert assistance in the cooking competition. While Soon Rong faced difficulties, Liangji excelled in preparing dishes. The aroma of Liangji's creations tantalized the audience's taste buds. It appeared that Liangji had realized Soon Rong's lack of cooking skills and intentionally challenged her to a cooking duel. Ultimately, Liangji succeeded in crafting a variety of delicious dishes, promptly serving them to Wang Ling. With an array of dishes available, some students also had the chance to taste Liangji's flavorful creations. Additionally, Liangji sneakily added a potion to Wang Ling's dish to induce a sense of fullness, ensuring he wouldn't try Soon Rong's cooking. Meanwhile, unable to prepare any dishes herself, Soon Rong resorted to serving instant crispy noodles, Wang Ling's favorite snack. Despite facing initial setbacks, Soon Rong remained confident realizing that Wang Ling didn't particularly enjoy Liangji's dishes. She cleverly enhanced the instant noodles with savory seasoning, presenting them elegantly to Wang Ling. To everyone's surprise, Wang Ling found Soon Rong's dish remarkably delightful, even shedding tears and inadvertently emitting a power that filled everyone with radiance and happiness. Witnessing this, Guo Hao declared Soon Rong as the winner of the cooking competition. Upon hearing this, Liangji suddenly became irritated and disputed the decision, arguing that Soon Rong hadn't cooked the dish herself. In response, Soon Rong explained to Liangji that she knew Wang Ling's preferences well before selecting him as the judge. Having been acquainted with Wang Ling for a long time, Soon Rong understood his fondness for instant crispy noodles. With her victory in the cooking competition, Soon Rong maintained her position as the school's most popular girl. Meanwhile, unable to defeat Soon Rong, Liangji grew increasingly frustrated and resolved to eliminate her. The scene then changed, revealing the demon frog's backstory as he prepared to celebrate his birthday. His mother instructed him on baking the birthday egg for exactly 10 minutes at a high temperature to avoid any mishaps. Before indulging in the birthday egg, his family extended their birthday wishes, expressing hopes for his happiness, finding a lovely partner, and having offspring. Eventually, the birthday egg hatched, revealing a delightful and mouth-watering birthday cake. His mother encouraged the demon frog to make a wish before blowing out the candles. The demon frog expressed a sincere wish, dreaming of becoming the demon king capable of protecting everyone someday. 
However, such aspirations are merely dreams now since the demon world, along with his entire family, has been annihilated. Shifting to the present, the demon frog, just waking up from his dream, searches for food due to his hunger. He discovers something spoiled in his food bowl, which turns out to be the dish cooked by Soon Rome during the cooking competition. Shortly after, the demon frog receives a notification on his cell phone, reminding him that today is his birthday. Meanwhile, Wang Ling arrives, leading the demon frog to assume that Wang Ling needs a favor. However, Wang Ling surprises him by revealing that he and his classmates are planning a birthday party for him. This unexpected news fills the demon frog with joy and gratitude, believing that Wang Ling and his friends remembered his birthday and organized something to celebrate. After the students leave, Soon Rong and her friends busily prepare for the birthday celebration. Chan Chao and Guo Hao handle the party decorations and select birthday gifts, placing them on the table. Wang Ling is tasked with retrieving the birthday egg, an important element in the Demon Clan's birthday celebration. After delegating tasks to her friends, Soon Rong instructs them to keep the birthday surprise a secret. Meanwhile, the Demon Frog, realizing that Soon Rong and her friends are still in the classroom, enters and questions why they haven't left yet. His unexpected arrival startles Soon Rong and her friends, prompting them to quickly hide the birthday surprise. However, before Soon Rong can escort him away, the Demon Frog catches a glimpse of something in the pill refining room. Soon Rong then assigns Lin with the duty of accompanying the Demon Frog for a walk while they prepare the birthday surprise. Believing that Soon Rong and her friends were organizing a birthday surprise for him, the Demon Frog felt sudden excitement and urged Lin to leave the school premises so as not to interrupt them. Meanwhile, as Soon Rong and her friends decorated their classroom for the celebration, Wang Lin was seen elsewhere fetching the birthday egg. Just as he was about to place the egg into the sack, Wang Lin was unexpectedly attacked from behind. However, he skillfully dodged the assault and handed the egg to Guo Hao for baking. With his clothes dirted from the skirmish, Wang Lin decided to clean himself up. Elsewhere, Lin engaged in conversation with the demon frog and offered him ice cream, which he declined, expecting a spread of delicious dishes at his birthday party. While the demon frog pondered the upcoming celebration, Pan Xinchong suddenly appeared, informing Lin that she had left her cell phone in the pill refining room. Realizing that Soon Rong and her friends planned to use the pill refining room for baking the birthday egg, the demon frog rushed to intercept Pan Xinchong to prevent her from accidentally disrupting the surprise. Racing ahead, the demon frog retrieved Lin's cell phone from the pill refining room. Using his remaining power, the demon frog then transformed into Zhao Yi and charmed Pan Xinchong. Despite Pan Xinchong's susceptibility to Zhao Yi's charms, she remained doubtful about the existence of the birthday egg in the pill refining room. The demon frog tried to convince Pan Xinchong by pretending to research the birthday egg, ultimately distracting her by inviting her to watch a movie together. Displaying signs of romantic interest in Zhao Yi, Pan Xinchong quickly bought tickets for the movie and agreed to wait for him outside the theater. Once Pan Xinchong left the school premises, the demon frog reverted to its original form and started to lose energy. Meanwhile, overhearing Gua Hao telling Chan Chao that he baked the birthday egg at low heat for the best flavor, the demon frog remembered his mother's warning that the egg must be baked at a high temperature to avoid disaster. Thus, the demon frog hurried after Gua Hao and the others to warn them before any catastrophe occurred. In the classroom, Gua Hao struggled to reach Wang Ling despite completing preparations for the birthday surprise. Meanwhile, Chan Chao and Soon Rong admired the birthday egg until it hatched, revealing an irresistibly cute cake demon. Caught off guard by the creature's charm, Chan Chao fell victim to its attack, allowing the cake demon to possess his body. Controlled by the cake demon, Chan Chao shattered the egg and unleashed the cake demons upon Gua Hao, Soon Rong, her bodyguards and others, bringing them under its influence. Shortly after, Wang Ling arrived and effortlessly eliminated the cake demons, rescuing everyone. Meanwhile, the demon frog reached the classroom only to realize it was too late. The birthday cake had turned into demons, ruining the carefully prepared surprise. The demon frog, Wang Ling, 
and Jin K felt deep sadness as soon Rome and her friend's efforts were wasted due to the spoiled surprise. Consequently, the demon frog decided to use all its power to rewind time, allowing them to execute the surprise as originally planned. Soon after, Lin and the demon frog finally entered the classroom, where Wang Ling and his friends awaited their arrival. To their surprise, Wang Ling and his friends had organized a birthday surprise for Lin, coincidentally sharing the same birthday as the demon frog. Lin was ecstatic and deeply moved by the gesture, forgetting that it was her own birthday. On the other hand, the demon frog felt disheartened and disappointed to discover that the surprise was for Lin and not for him. It felt upset, realizing it had gone to great lengths and exerted its power solely to bring joy to others. However, the demon frog wasn't the only one feeling disheartened by the day's turn of events. Elsewhere, Pun Shinchong was seen shedding tears of frustration as Zhao Yi failed to keep his promise of watching a movie with her. Upon contacting Zhao Yi, she was surprised to learn that he was out of the country on a business trip. Several days later, Guo Hao guided his friends to a mountain behind his family's house, explaining that it yielded plentiful crops which supported his family's medicinal herb business since the necessary ingredients were easily accessible there. Their goal that day was to find hemostatic spirit grass for their school project. Sensing the presence of the grass, the demon frog signaled they had arrived, increasing Chan Chao's excitement. Guohao warned his friends about the spirit beasts living in the area and urged caution. Suddenly, a spirit beast emerged, causing them to flee. During their escape, the demon frog accidentally fell into a trap set for spirit beasts. As a gorilla-like spirit beast prepared to attack, another, dragon-like spirit beast intervened, an unexpected event as such creatures were usually found in volcanic regions. While the two spirit beasts fought fiercely, Guo Hao and his friends chose to hide, unwilling to harm them. After the gorilla-like spirit beast was defeated, someone threw a gourd, trapping the beast inside. Tung Jingze then appeared, retrieving the gourd. The scene changes to Liangji promoting a game called Beast Monster Go, where players, known as Beast Hunters, use a gourd similar to Tung Jingze's to capture spirit beasts and confine them inside. Captured spirit beasts obey their masters, often serving as pets. Intrigued by the game's popularity, Tung Jingze invited Guo Hao and others to join him. However, Guo Hao firmly refused believing spirit beasts to be sacred creatures unsuitable for play or ownership. Ignoring Guo Hao's concerns, Tang Jingze left. Meanwhile, the demon frog felt neglected during their argument, still trapped in Tang Jingze's trap. Curious about Guo Hao's rejection, Chan Chao asked about his true reasons, knowing Guo Hao had previously enjoyed the game. Guo Hao revealed that his interest in Beast Monster Go faded upon discovering that some players mistreated captured spirit beasts, abandoning them when bored. While walking, they stumbled upon a rabbit spirit caught in one of Tang Jingze's traps. Guo Hao quickly freed the spirit, dismayed to find out that Tang Jingze callously allowed weaker spirits to die. At the same time, the freed demon frog sensed something wrong and found an injured unicorn spirit. Guo Hao and his friends quickly caught up with the demon frog and were stunned to find the severely injured unicorn. Noticing the unicorn's weakening condition due to excessive bleeding, the demon frog feared for her impending death and suggested consuming her. However, Wang Ling and the others firmly rejected the demon frog's proposal, choosing instead to transport the unicorn to Guo Hao's family herb shop for treatment. Upon arrival, they discovered Guo Hao's parents were not present, leading them to attempt treatment themselves. Despite Guo Hao's efforts to administer hemostatic spirit grass, the medicine proved ineffective, prompting them to seek alternative methods to save the unicorn's life. During Guo Hao and Chan Chao's discussion on treatment strategies, Wang Ling unexpectedly offered the crispy noodles to the unicorn. Surprisingly, his remarkable power instantly healed the unicorn's wounds, saving her from near death. Subsequently, Guo Hao allowed the unicorn to rest in a healing pool for faster recovery. Unbeknownst to Wang Ling and his friends, Tang Jingze secretly observed them from a distance, hinting at his hidden motives regarding the unicorn. Once fully recovered, Guo Hao named the unicorn Shou Yin, inspired by her snow-white fur. Shou Yin exhibited a strong bond with Wang Ling, 
likely due to him saving her life. Shortly after, Tung Jinze arrived and informed them that Shou Yin was a legendary spirit beast with blood-possessing healing properties. Irritated by Tung Jinze's presence, Guo Hao promptly expelled him from the shop, stating his irrelevance to the situation. In response, Tung Jinze asserted legal ownership of Shou Yin, claiming responsibility for her injuries. Chan Chao grew furious upon hearing about Tung Jinze's actions, but Guo Hao intervened, suggesting they resolve the dispute through a beast monster go battle. Agreeing to Guo Hao's challenge, Tung Jinze proposed that if he won, he would take Shou Yin as his own. Guo Hao agreed, insisting that Shou Yin would stay with him regardless, and if Tang Jinze prevailed, he would be banned from Guo Hao's family property. With the terms set, Guo Hao and Tang Jinze began their battle at a nearby fighting arena. Unexpectedly, Guo Hao asked the demon frog to battle Tang Jinze's spirit beast. Irritated by this request, the demon frog initially refused, feeling manipulated by Wang Ling and his friends. However, Wang Ling's stern gaze compelled the demon frog to agree. Just as the demon frog prepared to fight, Xiao Yin bravely stepped forward to confront Tang Jingzhe's formidable red-armored spirit beast. Despite Xiao Yin's bravery, she struggled against the larger red-armored beast, worsened by Guo Hao's lack of knowledge about unicorn combat techniques. Confident of victory, Tang Jingzhe commanded his spirit beast to unleash its ultimate technique, surrounding Xiao Yin in a ring of flames. Recognizing Xiao Yin's vulnerability to another such attack, Wang Ling intervened, empowering her with a surge of spirit power, enabling her to evolve and defeat the red-armored spirit beast. In the aftermath, Tung Jingze found himself trapped in his own trap, as the rabbit spirit, previously freed by Guo Hao, confiscated Tung Jingze's sword, preventing his escape. Despite Tung Jingze's efforts to retrieve his weapon, the giant rabbit spirit appeared and punished him for setting traps to ensnare spirit beasts in the forest. The next day, Liangji felt delighted to see a billboard promoting the Beast Monster Go game, featuring herself as the model. Her bodyguard informed her of the game's global popularity, boosting her confidence to surpass Soon Rong as the school's most popular girl and even become Song Hai's leading figure. Upon arriving at Faction 60 High School, Liangji expected a warm welcome from the students, only to find them gathered around Xiao Yin, completely ignoring her presence. Her bodyguard then revealed the popularity rankings, with Xiao Yin claiming the top spot, followed by Sun Rong and the Demon Frog. Furious at her fourth place ranking, Liangji felt humiliated to be surpassed by a non human spirit beast and a demon. Meanwhile, Guo Hao shared tales of Xiao Yin's adventures causing the unicorn to bond with Wang Ling upon his arrival, leaving Guo Hao feeling disheartened. Recognizing Xiao Yin as the legendary spirit beast associated with her family, Liangji became intrigued. During class, the demon frog attempted to prey on Xiao Yin, recognizing the value of her blood to both humans and demons. However, before he could act, Wang Ling intervened, stating his intention to protect Xiao Yin from individuals like Tang Jingze. However, Wang Ling remained doubtful of the demon frog's assertions and chose to create a magical barrier to protect Xiao Yin. Feeling betrayed by Wang Ling's lack of trust despite their past cooperation, the demon frog was deeply wounded. After setting up the barrier, Wang Ling escorted the demon frog away, leaving him feeling abandoned. Shortly afterward, Liangji, who had been spying on Xiao Yin, emerged from her hiding place, aiming to capture Xiao Yin using the gourd from the Beast Monster Go game. Unaware of Wang Ling's protective barrier, Liangji's attempt was thwarted as she was repelled when she tried to see Xiao Yin. During the break, students approached Xiao Yin to offer her food. Meanwhile, Master Wang unexpectedly arrived, as Guo Hao had brought Xiao Yin to school without permission. Initially planning to disperse the crowd and send Xiao Yin away, Master Wang's heart softened upon seeing Xiao Yin's adorableness and he allowed her to stay at the school. Meanwhile, Liangji watched from a distance and learned about the magical barrier protecting Xiao Yin. Determined to capture the unicorn, Liangji decided to enlarge Xiao Yin's size to break the barrier. After the students returned to their classrooms, Liangji secretly administered a special pill to Xiao Yin to hasten her growth. Shortly after, during Master Wang's lesson in the elite class, 
a powerful tremor shook the surroundings, indicating that Shou Yin had transformed into a massive unicorn. Guo Hao was astonished by Shou Yin's sudden growth, suggesting that she might have undergone evolution. Lin proposed that Shou Yin might have ingested something triggering her rapid transformation. Some frightened students urged Master Wang to expel Shou Yin from the school, but Master Wang defended her, believing she wouldn't cause harm. However, Shou Yin inadvertently destroyed the demon frog's cage and consumed a student's spirit sword. Despite this, Master Wang continued to advocate for Shou Yin and instructed the students to return to their lessons. Guo Hao took responsibility for the damage caused by Shou Yin's actions, acknowledging that he had brought her to the school. Unexpectedly, Master Wang was displeased with Shou Yin's behavior, leading him to confine her in the school gym to suppress her spiritual power. Guo Hao and Chan Chao expressed concern about Shou Yin being left alone, but soon Rong reassured them and promised to visit her the next day. Meanwhile, Wang Ling attempted to console Shou Yin, suggesting that a legendary spirit beast like her didn't belong in a human settlement. After leaving Shou Yin in the gym, Liang Ji and her bodyguards appeared, aiming to capture Shou Yin and make her the Jugong family's pet. Liang Ji's plan to utilize an evolution stone to harness Shou Yin's spiritual power backfired when Shou Yin consumed the stone, resulting in her rapid and enhanced evolution. Wang Ling and Guo Hao, intending to check on Shou Yin, were astonished to find her transformed into a giant, breaking free from the school gym. Shou Yin's uncontrollable power caused chaos in the city, prompting Zhao Yi and the Seven Star Squad to mobilize a spiritual formation to restrain her. Guo Hao, desperate to protect Shou Yin, intervened but ended up being swallowed whole by her, prompting Zhao Yi to activate the formation to subdue her. Meanwhile, Wang Ling and the demon frog observed from a distance. When asked about his plan, Wang Ling assured that he wouldn't harm Shou Yin and released the demon frog seal, allowing him to transform into his formidable form. Zhao Yi, noticing Wang Ling's presence, trusted him to handle the situation and instructed his subordinates not to act recklessly. The demon frog, unaware of Shou Yin's attack, was about to retaliate when Wang Ling intervened, hinting at his alternative strategy. Shortly after, the demon frog warned Wang Ling about the imminent danger posed by Shou Yin's powerful attack. Instead of instructing the demon frog to fight back, Wang Ling instructed him to open his mouth wide. As Shou Yin charged towards the demon frog, she was unexpectedly swallowed by him. Absorbing Shou Yin's spiritual power, the demon frog expelled Guo Hao and the evolution stone, causing Shou Yin to return to her normal size. Realizing the danger Shou Yin posed to both humans and herself in the human world, Wang Ling decided to relocate her. Using Jin Kei's spiritual power, Wang Ling created an interdimensional portal, transporting Shou Yin to the unicorn world where she could reunite with her kind and be safe. The scene then shifts to a flashback of Wang Ling and his father visiting a fair. Young Wang Ling was captivated by a wooden sword, later revealed to be Jin Kei. While Wang Ling admired the sword, his father discussed with the seller about an ancient sword claimed to be a historic treasure. The seller asserted it was a legendary sword wielded by cultivators to defeat dragons. But Wang Ling's father remained doubtful, considering it to be a mere imitation. Recognizing the dishonesty of the seller trying to pass off a fake sword as genuine, Wang Ling's father became angry and quickly escorted Wang Ling away from the situation. As they left, Wang Ling couldn't help but look back longingly at Jin Kei, almost as if the wooden sword was begging to be taken along. In the present, Guo Hao entertained his friends with a story about the four most powerful swordsmen engaging in an epic duel to determine the world's greatest swordsman. He described how the intensity of their battle captivated everyone who witnessed it. In the midst of the fight, a mysterious woman suddenly appeared, fearlessly challenging the swordsman. Despite her seeming underestimation of their abilities, the swordsman launched a coordinated attack against her. To the surprise of everyone, the enigmatic woman effortlessly defeated the four swordsmen and then disdainfully left without a second glance. Chan Chao, doubtful of Guo Hao's narrative, found it difficult to accept that such skilled fighters could be so easily overcome. Despite Chan Chao's skepticism, Guo Hao insisted on the truth of his story leading to a spirited debate until Master Wang intervened. 
steering their attention towards a demonstration of spiritual sword skills between Chan Chao and Wang Ling in the arena. Before the demonstration began, Chan Chao advised Wang Ling to replace his wooden sword, fearing it might break during the bout. However, Wang Ling remained resolute in his decision to wield Jin Kei, convinced of its strength as his most potent spiritual weapon. In the match, Chan Chao launched an attack with his spiritual sword, but to his surprise, Jin Kei not only deflected the strike, but also subdued Chan Chao, leaving him unable to continue. Despite winning his bout, Wang Ling was puzzled by Jin Kei's unexpected display of power, especially since he had been instructed to hold back to avoid damaging his classmates' swords. When Wang Ling sought an explanation from Jin Kei, he received no answer. In the next duel, Wang Ling was scheduled to face Sun Rong, who wielded the powerful spiritual sword Ahai. However, Sun Rong struggled to control Ahai, indicating that it was influenced by an external force. They were astonished to find that Ahai seemed drawn to Jin Kei, suggesting the presence of a significant magnetic field around him. The duel came to a halt as Jin Kei and Ahai became inexplicably stuck together. Realizing the situation, Lin, who had experienced caring for spiritual swords, suggested that Jin Kei might have entered the awakening stage. During this stage, a spiritual sword becomes restless and may resist its wielder, creating a magnetic field. This explained why Chan Chao's sword, being male, was deflected by Jin Kei's pull. Similarly, Jin Kei was attracted to the female Ahai, resulting in their entanglement. Lin proposed seeking help from an experienced spiritual sword caretaker to resolve the issue. The next day, Lin took her friends to the sword's graveyard, her former home. She explained that it was where improperly forged or unused spiritual swords ended up. Despite its remote location, Lin was familiar with the area from her childhood. There, they met Lin's older sister, Jian Lin, a seasoned spiritual sword caretaker. After examining Chan Chao's condition, Jian Lin reassured him that his injuries were minor. As Wang Lin tried to separate Jin Kei and Ahai, Jin Kei unexpectedly moved toward Jian Lin and stuck to her. Jian Lin realized that Jin Kei had entered the awakening stage expressing surprise at encountering a spiritual sword with such a strong magnetic field. Wang Ling's classmates were confused about how a wooden sword like Jin Kei could possess such a field. Jian Ling explained that the magnetic field was a result of the psychological challenges faced by spiritual swords at the awakening stage, indicating that Jin Kei needed proper guidance to overcome them. During the discussion, Zhao Yi and his seven-star squad arrived, surprised to see Wang Ling and his classmates. They asked about Jin Kei's connection to Jian Ling, but Wang Ling's group evaded the question. Zhao Yi revealed that they sought Jian Ling's help to repair their damaged spiritual sword. They recounted a recent encounter with a swordswoman causing chaos in the city. Despite their efforts, they were easily defeated, resulting in damage to their sword. Unable to fight without it, they turned to Jian Ling for help. Furthermore, Zhao Yi explained that the swordswoman wielded a wooden sword with a significant magnetic field. Upon hearing this, Chan Chao and the others immediately focused their attention on Wang Ling, realizing that the sword owned by the swordswoman was identical to Jin Kei. At the same time, Zhao Yi received a phone call informing him that the swordswoman had reappeared and was causing chaos. Upon learning this, Zhao Yi and the Seven Star Squad, unable to fight, due to their broken spiritual sword, observed as Sun Rong and the others chose to confront the swordswoman. Despite being high school students, Zhao Yi never underestimated their abilities, considering their past victories against demons. Furthermore, he fully trusted his master, Wang Ling, and permitted them to engage the swordswoman in battle. In the midst of the chaos, the swordswoman reveled in her apparent invincibility, mocking the warriors attempting to challenge her. From a distance, Liangji observed with curiosity, wondering how the swordswoman came to possess such an extraordinary spiritual sword. Noticing Zhao Yi's presence nearby, Liangji ordered her swordsman to withdraw, leaving the situation in Zhao Yi and the Seven Star Squad's hands as she departed with her bodyguards. Amidst the intense battle, the swordswoman skillfully anticipated and countered the incoming attacks. When Guo Hao attempted an underground assault with his spiritual sword, 
The swordswoman effortlessly dodged the strike and skillfully parried simultaneous attacks from Soon Rong and Lin. Observing the skirmish, Zhao Yi praised his disciples' efforts while acknowledging the swordswoman's superior combat skills. Meanwhile, Wang Ling instructed Jin Ke to confront the swordswoman, but Jin Ke hesitated and continued to cling to Jian Ling, harboring feelings for her due to her exceptional beauty. Recognizing Jin Ke's attachment, Jian Ling expressed her preference for a strong spiritual sword willing to use its power to protect and aid others. Encouraged by Jian Ling's words, Jin K affirmed his strength as the mightiest spiritual sword. As Jin K made his declaration, the swordswoman took notice and swiftly approached him. At the same time, Wang Ling had a sudden recollection of the swordswoman's identity, triggering a flashback to when he asked his father to purchase the wooden sword he had seen at the fair. Wang Ling's father fulfilled his son's request by promptly obtaining the wooden sword. However, when Wang Ling asked about the scabbard usually accompanying such swords, the merchant claimed that the wooden sword did not come with one, despite actually having hidden it. Nevertheless, Wang Ling accepted the wooden sword and preserved it over the years. In the present, Wang Ling finally realizes that the swordswoman is the missing scabbard of the wooden sword he acquired years ago, implying that she is Jin Kei's elder sister, Jin Yi, who had been searching for Jin Kei as they form an inseparable unity. Following the resolution of the incident, the media reported the mysterious swordswoman's defeat by the Seven Star Squad, though Wang Ling effortlessly resolved the issue. However, preferring to avoid attention, Wang Ling entrusted Zhao Yi with managing the aftermath, desiring a quiet and serene life. Meanwhile, Zhao Yi felt relieved knowing that Wang Ling had finally found the missing scabbard, understanding its significance as a crucial protector and support for spiritual swords, especially as their strength increased, often leading to psychological challenges. As a consequence of the chaos caused by Jin Yi, resulting in damage to the warrior's spiritual swords, she was tasked with repairing the damaged swords as part of her punishment. In another scene, a cultivator named Lord Thunder was seen traveling by train to a specific destination. At the same time, Zhao Yi and his seven-star squad also boarded the same train, intending to apprehend a group of thieves who had stolen a highly valuable item from an auction. Despite their efforts, the thieves managed to outsmart Zhao Yi and his team, successfully securing the prize possession and separating the train carriages to escape capture. Observing the situation, Lord Thunder encountered Zhao Yi and presented him with a gourd, which was the very item stolen by the thieves and should have been the most valuable auction item. Meanwhile, it was revealed that the perpetrators, who were affiliated with Liangji, aimed to obtain the item without spending money at the auction. However, unknown to Liangji and her associates, Lord Thunder had substituted the gourd. He rigged the one stolen by the thieves with explosives set to detonate after traveling a certain distance. A few days later, the most prestigious auction in Songchai began, drawing attendees from major sects and affluent families worldwide. Among them were Liangji and Tang Jingze, accompanied by his parents, all entering the auction venue. Meanwhile, Zhao Yi and Lord Thunder stood guard at the entrance, reflecting on recent events where Lord Thunder had foiled an attempt to steal the auction's most coveted item. Zhao Yi, tasked with ensuring the secure transportation of auction items, thanked Lord Thunder and mentioned his plan to attend the auction, albeit without participating due to financial constraints. Similarly, Lord Thunder expressed interest in attending, intrigued by the rare and valuable treasures typically found at such gatherings. Elsewhere, Wang Ling found himself in a card game with a boy named Ken at a local restaurant. Faced with unfavorable cards, Wang Ling hesitated in his next move, allowing Ken to confidently play his strongest card, the six-armed gorilla, securing a victory over Wang Ling. This loss left Wang Ling feeling vulnerable, despite his exceptional abilities. Ken pointed out that Wang Ling's lack of a powerful card was the decisive factor in his defeat, highlighting its importance in the game. As the Songhai Autumn Auction began, the host announced a collection of over 10,000 items from around the world, showcasing the finest and most valuable pieces. The first item showcased was a fragment of a celestial tome, with bidding starting at 1 million spiritual coins. Quickly, 
The bidding intensified, surprising Zhao Yi as prominent families like the Tang and soon competed for the relic. Lord Thunder, standing beside Zhao Yi, explained that the ancient book was no ordinary tome. It contained the legendary forbidding spell. He further revealed that the Tang and Soon families, in a partnership 3,000 years ago, had created this spell to ensure fair dealings in their business ventures in the West. Despite the bidders remaining anonymous, Lord Thunder deduced their identities from their enthusiastic bidding, linked to the treasure's significance in their family histories. Impressed by Lord Thunder's insights, Zhao Yi asked why he hadn't bid for the ancient book himself. Lord Thunder casually replied that he preferred not to involve himself in the feud between the Tang and Soon families. However, in reality, Lord Thunder refrained from bidding due to his modest background, not being from a wealthy family. The scene shifted to Wang Ling, who went to a convenience store to buy two boxes of crispy noodles, his favorite snack. He hoped to find a special card inside one of the packages to use against Ken in their card game, aiming to defeat him. Disappointed by the contents of the first box, Wang Ling received encouragement from nearby children, who reminded him that he still had another chance with the second box. Meanwhile, at the auction, Zhao Yi was surprised to see a pair of sweatpants with the initials WL on the waist up for bidding. Lord Thunder informed Zhao Yi that these were no ordinary sweatpants. They were rumored to be the supreme cultivator's pants, reputedly bulletproof and capable of withstanding a nuclear bomb. Elsewhere, Wang Ling's mother searched for his sweatpants among the laundry, but they were missing. Her husband confessed to disposing of them, unaware that someone had salvaged them, turning them into a valuable auction item. Back at the auction, various participants vied for Wang Ling's sweatpants, including Zhao Yi. However, Zhao Yi couldn't match the high bidding due to his limited savings. Eventually, the Tang family seemed poised to win, offering the highest bid, while the Soon family chose to conserve their funds for more valuable items. To everyone's surprise, Liangji offered a substantially higher bid for Wang Ling's sweatpants compared to the Tang family, despite her bodyguard advising against extravagant spending. Liangji remained firm, confident in her calculations and determination to acquire all the treasures she desired. Meanwhile, Wang Ling hadn't found the golden card yet, despite opening all the boxes of crispy noodles he had bought. Some children watching him decided to leave, fearing Wang Ling's perceived bad luck. Wang Ling, watching the auction live on television, was amazed to see his sweatpants fetch a high price. Shortly after, the auctioneer introduced the sealed white-eyed blue dragon, a mythical box capable of granting any wish, which Liangji's associates tried to steal. The audience was astonished by this unexpected item, and bidding started at an astounding 10 million spiritual coins. Even the Tang and Soon families were willing to exhaust their fortunes for a chance to acquire the white-eyed blue dragon. Liangji boldly placed a bid of 40 million, stunning the room, including the Tang and Soon families, who eventually backed down. Confident of securing the item, Liangji was taken aback when Lord Thunder unexpectedly bid 45 million spiritual coins for the white-eyed blue dragon. Zhao Yi, puzzled by Lord Thunder's bid despite claiming to be financially constrained, questioned him. Lord Thunder disclosed that he had earned a substantial sum from the auction of Wang Ling's sweatpants, allowing him to confidently bid for the white-eyed blue dragon. At the same time, Zhao Yi received a call from Wang Ling, instructing him to bid 87 million for the white-eyed blue dragon. With no one able to surpass Wang Ling's bid, Zhao Yi, representing Wang Ling, was declared the official winner of the white-eyed blue dragon, capable of granting any wish. Later that night, as Zhao Yi prepared to meet Wang Ling, Lord Thunder secretly followed him, observing from a distance. Surprised that a high school student had directed Zhao Yi to secure the auction's most valuable item, Lord Thunder remained confident that only he possessed the ability to unseal the white-eyed blue dragon. However, to his amazement, Wang Ling effortlessly destroyed the seal and released the dragon trapped within. Rather than making a wish to the powerful creature, Wang Ling defeated the dragon, transforming it into the most potent card he would use to defeat Ken. In the following days, Guo Hao voiced his discontent with the Demon Slayers patrolling Song Chai, whose actions often disrupted the peace of the residents. While getting ready for school with Wang Ling, Guo Hao was startled by a speeding motorcycle rider endangering other safety. 
Assuming the rider to be a demon slayer, Gua Hao confronted them, hoping that the Seven Star Squad would apprehend such individuals who acted recklessly and bring them to justice. However, to Gua Hao's surprise, the rider suddenly turned around and approached them, sparking panic as Gua Hao feared potential retaliation for his remarks. Gua Hao urged Wang Ling to flee, fearing that the approaching rider might be a demon slayer who posed a threat. Holding onto Wang Ling's arm tightly, Gua Hao confessed his apprehension about the demon slayers, known for their rough behavior. However, to their astonishment, the rider turned out to be Chan Chao, who had joined the ranks of the demon slayers. Following Chan Chao's transformation into a demon slayer, students at Faction 60 High School discussed his new appearance, characterized by a thug-like demeanor and a departure from the school's dress code. They were surprised by Chan Chao's decision to align himself with the demon slayers, especially considering his previous role as the president of the elite class. Later, Wa Hao attempted to buy gum at the school's food stall but was refused service for not wearing the school uniform. Reacting quickly, Wa Hao escorted Chan Chao away from the stall while Wang Ling purchased his favorite snack, crispy noodles. Guo Hao then questioned Chan Chao about his significant change since joining the Demon Slayers. Chan Chao explained that the organization had provided him with clothing and an iron rod for fighting demons. Worried, Guo Hao reminded his friend about their status as Faction 60 high school students, emphasizing that Chan Chao shouldn't associate with outside organizations. However, Chan Chao disregarded Guo Hao's advice, asserting his right to choose his affiliations and personal style. He warned Guo Hao not to interfere in his affairs and criticized the school uniforms as dull and outdated. During their disagreement, Wang Ling noticed Pan Shenchong observing them. Pan Shenchong criticized Chan Chao for breaking the rules and warned him against associating with external organizations. Despite the warning, Chan Chao remained determined to be part of the Demon Slayers, sparking a heated argument. Concerned about Chan Chao's significant transformation since joining the Demon Slayers, Sun Rong suggested informing Chan Chao's father. However, Guo Hao opposed the idea, fearing his father's strictness and the potential repercussions for Chan Chao. Despite the risks involved, they felt compelled to intervene to assist their friend. Wang Ling proposed a plan to expose the true nature of the Demon Slayers. However, executing the plan required using someone as bait to observe the Demon Slayer's activities. The next day, Wang Ling and Guo Hao recruited Sun Rong to deliberately approach the Demon Slayers while they observed from a distance, ready to document any misconduct. Guo Hao hoped that by gathering evidence of the Demon Slayer's wrongdoing, they could persuade Chan Chao to reconsider his affiliation once he learned the truth. Despite Sun Rong's willingness to aid her classmates, she couldn't shake off her apprehension about potential danger from the Demon Slayers. Guo Hao, seeking to reassure her, promised to keep a close watch on her safety from a distance. Later that day, as Sun Rong traversed a quiet alley, she encountered the Demon Slayers stationed there. One of them greeted her and approached, prompting Wang Ling and Guo Hao to brace for misconduct. However, they were surprised when he laid his jacket on the ground for Sun Rong to walk on displaying unexpected kindness. After ensuring her safety, they advised her against walking alone in deserted areas where demons might lurk. Observing from a distance, Guo Hao and Wang Ling were amazed by the demon slayer's unexpected benevolence towards Sun Rong. Despite this, Guo Hao maintained his skepticism about their true motives. Shortly afterward, they noticed the demon slayers observing an elderly lady preparing to cross the road. Instead of offering assistance, they appeared to be assessing her, leading Wang Ling to suspect their intentions, especially since the lady carried a valuable branded bag, suggesting a potential robbery. Meanwhile, Chan Chao suddenly emerged and approached the elderly lady to help her cross the street. Observing this, the demon slayers quickly warned Chan Chao that the old lady was, in fact, a disguised demon. However, their caution came too late as the demon revealed its true form and attacked Chan Chao. Reacting swiftly, Guo Hao and Sun Rong rushed to assist Chan Chao, ultimately defeating the demon with the combined efforts of Chan Chao and the Demon Slayers. Recognizing their misjudgment of the Demon Slayers, Guo Hao and Sun Rong apologized for their prejudice. In response, one of the Demon Slayers, Jin Dao, graciously accepted their apology, 
understanding the skepticism often directed towards them by the townspeople of Sanchai. As outsiders, they were accustomed to such suspicion. Despite the distrust they faced, Jean Dao affirmed the Demon Slayer's dedication to protecting everyone from demon threats. He expressed hope for the Sanchai townspeople's support in their battle against demons, aiming to foster a cooperative relationship between Huashio and Young Island. Impressed by Gua Hao and Soon Rong's skills in battling demons, Jean Dao extended an invitation for them to join the Demon Slayers alongside Chan Chao. While Gua Hao and Soon Rong expressed interest, Jean Dao excluded Wang Ling from the offer, perceiving him as weak and lacking sufficient spiritual power, fearing he might impede their efforts if he joined. Later that night, Chan Chao approached Wang Ling and insisted on convincing Jean Dao to accept Wang Ling into the Demon Slayer group, despite Wang Ling's lack of interest in joining. Chan Chao disclosed that his father had disowned him due to failing an exam and causing his spiritual sword to bend. In the midst of his despair, Chan Chao was suddenly attacked by a menacing demon. Despite his attempts to defend himself, Chan Chao found himself overwhelmed until Jean Dao and the Demon Slayers intervened, saving him and defeating the demon. Thankful for their help and feeling lost after his expulsion, Chan Chao readily agreed to join the Demon Slayers upon Jean Dao's offer. As Chan Chao and Wang Ling prepared to meet Jean Dao to advocate for Wang Ling's inclusion, they were shocked to discover Jean Dao collaborating with the same demon who had previously disguised itself as an elderly lady. It became evident that Jean Dao and the Demon Slayers were causing chaos in Songchai, promising rewards to the demons for allowing themselves to be defeated by the supposedly weaker Demon Slayers. Chan Chao felt betrayed and stunned by this revelation, realizing that Jean Dao and his allies had deceived both him and the people of Songchai by posing as defenders against demons. Upon seeing Chan Chao, Jean Dao ordered his minions and the demons to silence Chan Chao by eliminating him. As Chan Chao tried to confront them with his iron rod, the demons revealed its ineffectiveness against them, suggesting that Jean Dao had given it to Chan Chao as a mere mockery. Suddenly, Chan Chao became possessed by a demon, aiming to seize control of his body. Jean Dao urged Wang Ling to surrender, citing Chan Chao's possession as a hindrance. However, Wang Ling easily defeated the demons, having previously conquered the demon world. Meanwhile, under the demon's influence, Chan Chao attacked Wang Ling, but Wang Ling skillfully dodged and promptly expelled the demon by pressing his fingers against Chan Chao's forehead. After defeating Jin Dao and his allies, Wang Ling pretended to be unconscious and feigned ignorance when Chan Chao, now back to normal, asked about what had happened. The next day, a man disguised as a member of the Seven Star Squad, following orders from Zhao Yi, arrived at the Demon Slayer headquarters suspecting their involvement in recent demon attacks. Getting no response at the door, Zhao Yi and his companion forcefully entered the headquarters, only to find it occupied by demons. Faced with the outnumbered demons, Zhao Yi's comrades retreated, leaving him alone against them. Coincidentally, Wang Ling passed by on his bicycle and saw Zhao Yi being attacked by the demons. Wang Ling immediately intervened to rescue Zhao Yi. Shortly after, Zhao Yi's subordinate returned with backup, but they found the demons already defeated. Zhao Yi claimed sole credit for defeating the demons, unaware that the entire incident had been captured on a CCTV camera nearby, installed by an unknown individual. A few days later, Zhao Yi, having recovered from his injuries, prepared to address the recent demon attack on Songchai in a press conference. As he stepped onto the stage, he was pleasantly surprised to find Wang Ling and his classmates among the audience, showing their support. Zhao Yi recounted a frightening encounter with the demon frog a decade ago, when he was still part of the Seven Star Squad. Despite the immense challenge posed by the demon frog, Zhao Yi bravely fought to protect everyone, especially Wang Ling, who was in grave danger. With unwavering courage, Zhao Yi unleashed his power and ultimately defeated the formidable demon frog. After that incident, Zhao Yi made a commitment to dedicate himself to protecting Song Chai. He shared several instances where he and the Seven Star Squad successfully thwarted demon threats. He explained how the recent demon attack exploited a vulnerability created by past events, leading to chaos in the human realm. However, 
Zhao Yi assured the citizens that he had eradicated the demon's strongholds and captured hundreds of troublemaking demons, ensuring Song Chai's safety. He pledged to continue safeguarding the city alongside the Seven Star Squad. In the midst of the audience's admiration for Zhao Yi, the stage monitor unexpectedly played CCTV footage showing him overwhelmed by demons. Suddenly, a bolt of lightning struck down the assailants, and Wang Ling emerged to assist Zhao Yi, demonstrating his bravery and solidarity with his friend. After the CCTV footage was released, Zhao Yi faced swift backlash as he had previously claimed to have defeated the demons alone. The video quickly spread across social media, leading to widespread discussion and disappointment directed at Zhao Yi. Hate comments flooded the platforms, with many condemning his actions. Despite this, Chan Chao and Guo Hao staunchly defended Zhao Yi, believing the footage had been manipulated. However, they lacked solid evidence to support their defense. In a significant blow to Zhao Yi's reputation, Faction 60 High School, which had connections to Zhao Yi, severed ties and urged the public not to associate the school with his alleged misdeeds. Unknown to many, the person behind the CCTV footage was none other than Liang Ji, who aimed to discredit Zhao Yi and remove him from Song Chai, seeing his presence as a threat to her plans for controlling the city. Upon reaching the headquarters of the Seven Star Squad, Zhao Yi hurried to explain the situation to his superior. However, his efforts proved futile as his superior, already disappointed by his deceit, promptly dismissed Zhao Yi from the squad. Zhao Yi reluctantly handed over his sword and badge, accepting the decision. Later, as he reunited with his concerned subordinates, Zhao Yi urged them to stay focused on their duties and assured them not to worry about him. While making his way to the parking lot, Zhao Yi realized he had left his car keys in his office. Initially intending to retrieve them along with his sword, he remembered that he had surrendered it. With resignation, he decided to return to his office for the keys. To his surprise, he found his former colleagues celebrating his dismissal with joy. They were relieved that Zhao Yi's departure meant they could avoid his demanding work standards and enjoy some relaxation. Sensing his unwelcome presence, Zhao Yi chose to leave quietly, not wanting to spoil their celebration. With a heavy heart, Zhao Yi left the Seven Star Squad headquarters and headed home. While on his way, Zhao Yi encountered unexpected rain, prompting him to seek shelter under an umbrella. However, the recent news labeling him a liar had turned the people of Sanchai against him, even leading a shopkeeper to refuse to sell him an umbrella. Helpless against the mounting hostility, Zhao Yi could only accept his fate. Amidst his desolation, he noticed a figure in a hooded raincoat, apparently seeking refuge from the rain. Suspecting the person to be a disguised demon, Zhao Yi decided to follow. In a deserted alley, Zhao Yi found himself surrounded by demons, realizing he had been lured into a trap. While he suspected the demons of orchestrating the CCTV footage leak at the Demon Slayer's headquarters, they denied involvement, claiming they were hired to eliminate him. Without his spiritual sword, Zhao Yi was defenseless against the demon's onslaught. Just as things seemed dire, Wang Ling arrived to rescue him. With ease, Wang Ling defeated the demons and dispersed the rain clouds, restoring clarity to the sky. As Wang Ling prepared to erase Zhao Yi's memories, he had a sudden realization. He had unwittingly manipulated Zhao Yi's memories, indirectly contributing to his plight. When Zhao Yi meets Wang Ling, he realizes that he has been living with false memories, confirming the accusations of being a fraud. Curious, Zhao Yi asks Wang Ling why he was chosen to receive all the praise. Wang Ling responds that Zhao Yi deserves the acclaim because of his dedication to protecting everyone, even risking his life to save Wang Ling from the demon frog. Although ultimately, it was Wang Ling who saved Zhao Yi and defeated the demon frog. Wang Ling offers Zhao Yi two pills. The blue one would erase the recent incident from Zhao Yi's memory, and Wang Ling would alter everyone else's memories, so Zhao Yi would still be seen as a hero. The red pill had the same effect, but with a strawberry flavor. Surprisingly, Zhao Yi adamantly refuses Wang Ling's offer, expressing his desire to be a genuine hero but acknowledging his current lack of strength to protect everyone. Zhao Yi then asks Wang Ling to train him to become stronger. Wang Ling agrees and accepts Zhao Yi as his disciple, sending him abroad for training. The following day, Zhao Yi is seen at the airport, 
ready to depart for his training overseas. Meanwhile, Liang Ji, upon learning of Zhao Yi's departure from Song Chai, smiles, relieved to have removed the biggest threat to her plan to rule Song Chai. A few days later, Wa Hao and Chan Chao are seen discussing the upcoming holy ritual celebration at the Heavenly Paradise while at the school cafeteria. Guo Hao asked Chan Chao about his choice of companion for the sacred ritual celebration, emphasizing the importance of having a partner to enter the heavenly paradise. Initially, Chan Chao planned to invite Lin, but she declined, citing work commitments during the celebration. Hearing this, Guo Hao teased Chan Chao and jokingly suggested asking Liang Ji instead. Guo Hao was confident Liang Ji would agree considering she had never experienced the heavenly paradise before and might be interested in attending the amusement park during the celebration. Although Chan Chao had feelings for Soon Rong and wished to invite her, he doubted she would accept his invitation. Feeling inadequate compared to Soon Rong's wealthy background and impressive spiritual abilities. Recognizing the situation, Wa Hao encouraged his friend to find the courage to ask Soon Rong to the sacred ritual celebration. With Guo Hao's support, Chan Chao felt empowered to approach Soon Rong about the event. However, as Chan Chao geared up to speak to Soon Rong, he witnessed her inviting Wang Ling instead. This left Chan Chao feeling heartbroken, realizing that Soon Rong already had a companion for the celebration. Later that afternoon, Chan Chao met with Guo Hao, who shared his disappointment after being turned down by Li Yangji. They consoled each other, acknowledging their shared romantic misfortune. The following night, Guo Hao waited at the gate of the heavenly paradise, patiently anticipating Chan Chao's arrival despite traffic delays. Shortly after, Wang Ling finally reached the heavenly paradise and encountered Guo Hao, who had been patiently waiting at the entrance. Seeing Wang Ling arrive alone, Guo Hao assumed that Soon Rong had abandoned him. However, unbeknownst to Guo Hao, Soon Rong had arrived earlier to deliver a speech inaugurating the sacred ritual, a revered tradition of the Soon family. Addressing the crowd, Soon Rong announced the assortment of complimentary food available for everyone's delight and disclosed that the highlight of the evening would be the unveiling of the Jingu Bang. The Soon family's revered magical staff at 11 o'clock. After her speech, Soon Rong officially initiated the sacred ritual celebrations, welcoming guests to enter the heavenly paradise. Meanwhile, her bodyguard directed Wang Ling to use the VIP entrance sparing him from waiting in line. As they wandered around, Soon Rong invited Wang Ling to join her for dinner at her home, revealing that her parents were absent. Wang Ling agreed, on the condition that Soon Rong provide his favorite crispy noodles. With Soon Rong's approval, they hurried to the Soon family residence for dinner. To Soon Rong's surprise, they discovered her grandfather, Yi Yuan, at home, who insisted they dine with him. During the meal, Yi Yuan probed into Soon Rong and Wang Ling's relationship, assuming they were romantically involved. When Soon Rong attempted to clarify matters, Yi Yuan silenced her, insisting that Wang Ling provide the answers. Wang Ling honestly responded to Yi Yuan's questions, but Yi Yuan perceived his replies as arrogant. Yi Yuan then questioned Wang Ling's level of cultivation, discovering that Wang Ling was considerably weaker than Soon Rong. This revelation enraged Yi Yuan, who condemned Soon Rong's association with someone he considered feeble and ineffective, fearing it would endanger the Soon family's future. Despite his inclination to expel Wang Ling, Yi Yuan's bodyguard intervened, reminding him of the Soon family's ancestral matchmaking customs, which he was obligated to uphold. Yielding to tradition, Yi Yuan presented Wang Ling with three tests to demonstrate his suitability to marry Soon Rong and become a member of the Soon family. For the initial trial, Yi Yuan guided Wang Ling and Soon Rong to the playground within the Heavenly Paradise Square. Despite an unexpected accident where the Champagne Tower collapsed, causing a messy situation, Wang Ling and Soon Rong persevered towards the testing area, undeterred. Upon arriving at the arena, Yi Yuan proposed a physical strength challenge to Wang Ling. Despite Yi Yuan achieving a high score and breaking a record, he felt dissatisfied, reminiscing about his past accomplishments. Underestimating Wang Ling, Yi Yuan, and his guards expected an easy win. However, Wang Ling, using only a fraction of his true strength, surpassed Yi Yuan, astonishing everyone. In the subsequent trial, 
Yiwan tasked Wang Ling with shooting lanterns positioned atop a distant hill. Despite Yi Yuan's display of confidence, Wang Ling remained unaffected by his attempts to intimidate him, eagerly embracing each challenge presented. Initially, Yi Yuan and his guards assumed Wang Ling had failed the trial when his arrow missed the mark. However, Wang Ling asked them to wait, explaining that his arrow was taking a detour around the earth. Surprisingly, Wang Ling's arrow returned, hitting the target from an unexpected direction. Impressed by Wang Ling's remarkable performance in the first two tests, Yi Yuan proposed a final challenge, a duel between himself and Wang Ling. Leading them to the Sun family's armory, Yi Yuan presented a variety of legendary weapons. Taking precautions, Wang Ling opted for a red staff embedded in a boulder to prevent accidental harm. When Wang Ling effortlessly extracted the staff, which weighed over five tons, both Yi Yuan and Sun Rong were amazed. Yi Yuan was particularly amazed because the staff was traditionally reserved for the Sun family founders, and no one had been able to lift it for thousands of years. Perplexed by Wang Ling's extraordinary strength, he quickly returned the staff to its place, causing a powerful quake. Witnessing Wang Ling's achievement, Yi Yuan and his guards bowed before him, recognizing his ability to wield the Sun family's most cherished artifact. Later, Sun Rong and Wang Ling joined the festivities at the Heavenly Paradise Square to celebrate the conclusion of the sacred ritual. Releasing lanterns and anticipating the unveiling of the magical staff in the center of the pond. Unbeknownst to them, a demon lurked in the shadows, seemingly tracking their movements with a purpose. As the crowd eagerly awaited the revelation of the Sun family's revered magical staff, they were shocked to find it gone. Yi Yuan quickly pointed the blame at Wang Ling, suspicious of him because of his unique ability to handle the staff. Meanwhile, the scene shifts to Liangji awakening on the morning of the holy ritual. Feeling a sense of urgency, she hurried outside and came across a crow symbolizing her father. Respectfully, Liangji knelt before the crow, regarding it as a paternal figure. Through the crow, her father conveyed the mission to steal the magical staff, referencing Liangji's past failure to acquire the white-eyed blue dragon, which could grant any wish. Although she had anticipated a relaxing weekend, Liangji felt obligated to obey her father's commands and promptly agreed to the task. In the evening, Liangji found herself queuing alongside other visitors eager to enter the heavenly paradise. Since entry required a partner, Liangji, who arrived alone, felt puzzled until she spotted Guo Hao, Chan Xiao, and lean ahead of her. Approaching Lean, Liangji requested to be her partner to gain access to the heavenly paradise. However, Lean awaited Soon Rong's bodyguard, who would escort her without a partner. Sensing Lean's hesitation, Liangji crafted a tale about seeking to learn the Soon family's traditions for potential collaboration with her own family. Lean doubted Liangji's sincerity, given her affluent background on Taeyang Island. Unfazed, Liangji asserted her capabilities stating she could handle tasks beyond the typical expectations of wealthy girls. Soon Rong's bodyguard arrived, puzzled by Liangji's presence, but quickly ushered them to the kitchen due to their busy schedule. Inside, Liangji was surprised to be assigned dishwashing duty while Lin tended to other tableware. Feeling uncomfortable with her unfamiliar task, Liangji faced criticism from a staff member for her lack of skill. In contrast, Lin praised Liangji's willingness to undertake servant-like duties despite her wealthy upbringing. Admiring Lin's work ethic, Liangji silently commended her as a hard-working individual willing to tackle any job for financial gain. After learning that Lin had experience working part-time at the Soon family residence, Liangji pleaded with her to guide them to the main hall, where the Soon family's magical staff was kept. However, Lin explained that only authorized individuals could enter the main hall, and as servants, they needed approval from Soon Rong's bodyguard, who closely monitored the area. Shortly afterward, Liangji was assigned the task of transporting the Champagne Tower to the Heavenly Paradise Square. Upon completing her task, Liangji ran into Lord Thunder, who praised her appearance and noticed the Jugong family's precious heirloom hidden beneath her clothing. Irritated by Lord Thunder's persistent attention, Liangji deliberately knocked over the Champagne Tower, accidentally soaking Lin nearby. Taking advantage of the situation to divert Lord Thunder's focus, Liangji swiftly led Lin to the main hall for a change of clothes, 
despite encountering resistance from a guard blocking their entry. Having successfully infiltrated the main hall of the Soon family residence, Liangji discreetly made her way into the weapons room with the aim of stealing the Soon family's magical staff. Meanwhile, Yi Yuan urgently summoned the Seven Star Squad to investigate the theft of the Soon family's magical staff. The squad members were puzzled by the lack of clues, longing for Zhao Yi's sharp leadership as their captain, who could potentially solve the case effortlessly. Yi Yuan urged Wang Ling to return the family heirloom, still harboring suspicions about him despite his protests. Shortly after, Lord Thunder intervened, defending Wang Ling's innocence by highlighting his constant presence with Sun Rong during the sacred ritual event, making it unlikely for him to commit the theft. Sun Rong supported the defense, although she knew that her grandfather accused Wang Ling because of his unique ability to wield the staff. Lord Thunder explained the unique ability of the magical staff, which could change its size based on the wielder's intention, suggesting that it might have shrunk to a needle size in Wang Ling's possession. Despite their thorough search, they found no trace of the staff, prompting Wang Ling to suggest reviewing the CCTV footage. Upon review, they observed Wang Ling and Sun Rong entering and leaving the weapons room with Yi Wan and his bodyguard before 9 in the evening. Around 9 o'clock, Lin was seen walking through the corridor near the weapons room. At exactly 9 o'clock, Liangji stealthily entered the weapons room, tampering with the CCTV camera to hide her actions. The next day, Liangji returned to Taeyang Island and began a ritual with her followers in a volcanic crater. While performing the incantations to strengthen the barrier within the crater, Liangji's phone rang, showing a call from Sun Rong. Disregarding the call, Liangji continued with the ritual. Soon after, she received another call from an unknown number, which she answered, only to hear Soon Rong demanding the return of her family's magical staff. Ignoring Soon Rong's demands, Liangji threw her phone into the volcano's crater. Meanwhile, outside the Jugong family residence, Soon Rong was visibly upset by Liangji's lack of response. Upon learning this, Guo Hao, along with Chan Chao and Wang Ling, devised a plan to coax Liangji out of her home. In the depths of the volcanic crater, Liangji was nearing the end of her ritual when she was startled by loud disturbances from outside. Investigating, she found Guo Hao and Chan Chao causing a disturbance with loud music and off-key singing. Annoyed, Liangji confronted them, insisting they leave her property. When confronted by Sun Rong, she was accused of stealing the Sun family's magical staff during the holy ritual. Liangji denied the accusation threatening to involve the police if they didn't leave immediately. However, Soon Rong persisted, referencing CCTV footage showing Liangji entering the Soon family's weapons room. As tensions escalated, Jin Kei informed Wang Ling about a strong negative energy emanating from the volcano behind the Jugong family's residence, coinciding with traces of spiritual energy from the Soon family staff. Despite this evidence, Liangji continued to deny any involvement and ordered her demon-slaying subordinates to attack Sun Rong and her companions while she focused on her ritual. As Liangji's minions closed in, Guo Hao wondered about Wang Ling's whereabouts, as he had mysteriously disappeared. Meanwhile, as Liangji climbed the stairs to the volcanic crater, she encountered Wang Ling, who urged her to return the staff. Despite her protests, Wang Ling's persistent presence irritated Liangji leading her to summon demons to eliminate him. The demons proved to be no match for Wang Ling, known as the Immortal King for his prowess in vanquishing their realm. Wang Ling effortlessly dealt with the demons, even destroying the magic scroll that Liangji had used to summon them. As the scroll disintegrated, Wang Ling and Liangji found themselves in a menacing realm where a colossal demon lurked, ready to attack. Suddenly, Zhao Yi emerged and battled the demon, ultimately emerging victorious. Wang Ling and Liangji were surprised to see Zhao Yi there, defeating such a formidable foe on his own. It seemed that Wang Ling had sent Zhao Yi to Young Island as part of his training, suspecting a possible connection between the demon slayers and the invasion of demons into the human world. Upon arriving at Young Island, Zhao Yi discovered that the Jugong family had captured the demons trying to enter the human realm and imprison them in a volcano crater near their estate. While exploring the Jugong family's property, Liangji spotted Zhao Yi and confined him alongside the sealed demons in the volcanic crater. 
Zhao Yi soon realized that the demons imprisoned there were locked in fierce battles to establish dominance and become the strongest. As part of the Jugong family's plan to create a demon king to rule over the world, Liangji confirmed that the demons appearing in Huaxiu country originated from this location and were summoned through a magical formation. Subsequently, the demon slayers would pretend to defeat the demons to gain the trust of the people. Concerned about the weakening barrier holding the demons captive, Liangji and her family were seeking ways to strengthen it and prevent the demons from escaping. Liangji admitted her initial plan to steal the Soon family's magical staff, but faced difficulties in retrieving it, ultimately leaving empty-handed. Meanwhile, the demons, aware of their presence, prepared to attack. Despite Liangji's warning about the overwhelming number of demons, Wang Ling and Zhao Yi remained resolute, preparing for battle. Recognizing their determination, Liangji revealed a potential disaster. Breaking the demon seal would trigger a catastrophic volcanic eruption, endangering Taeyang Island. Wang Ling and Zhao Yi heeded her caution, abandoning their plan to eliminate the demons. While considering alternative solutions, the seal suddenly cracked and crumbled, courtesy of the Soon family's magical staff. With the barrier shattered, the demons escaped, causing a massive volcanic eruption. Wang Ling and his companions wondered who had destroyed the seal, only to be shocked to learn that the culprit was the demon frog. The narrative then shifts to the past, revealing a previous encounter between Zhao Yi and the demon frog during the Seven Star Squad's demon hunt in Songchai. Zhao Yi had asked about the demon's whereabouts, but the demon frog deceitfully claimed to have fled in the opposite direction, concealing its true proximity. After being rescued by the demon frog, the demon expressed gratitude, but also urged him to join the demons and become their leader, the demon king, to protect their clan. However, the demon frog refused, feeling a strong bond with his human companions like Wang Ling and others. He also remembered his mother's advice, imagining himself as a potential demon king who could promote peace between demons and humans, advocating for their coexistence. The demon frog's perception of humans changed dramatically when he realized that Wang Ling and his friends had never truly considered him a friend. They neglected his birthday and mostly used him for their own purposes, showing little concern for his well-being. Feeling disillusioned, the demon frog encountered the demon he had previously saved, who guided him to the demon sanctuary in Songchai City. There, the demons recounted their escape from the Jugong family's imprisonment in a volcanic crater. Describing the mistreatment they suffered at the hands of humans who were solely focused on their own interests. Upon discovering the demon's plight and oppression, the demon frog felt compelled to intervene. He couldn't stand seeing his kind suffer and being forced into deadly conflicts, endangering their very survival. The demon frog commanded his fellow demons to free their imprisoned brethren held by the Jugong family in different locations. However, they faced challenges in breaking the seals. To overcome this, the demon frog devised a plan to acquire the Soon family's powerful magical staff, a renowned weapon in the human realm. Disguised as lean during the holy ritual, the demon frog infiltrated the weapons room and effortlessly stole the staff, leveraging his past as a formidable demon king. He then transported the staff to Tay Young Island to dismantle the seal, enclosing the volcanic crater. In the present timeline, after breaking the seal and releasing the trapped demons, the demon frog was surprised to encounter Wang Ling. Realizing he couldn't match Wang Ling's strength, the demon frog ordered his demon allies to retreat. It was then that Wang Ling realized the true culprit behind the theft of the Soon family's magical staff was none other than the demon frog. Acknowledging his inferiority in combat against Wang Ling, the demon frog proposed a challenge. If Wang Ling could correctly answer three questions, he and the demons would surrender. Otherwise, they would be allowed to remain in the human world due to Wang Ling's destruction of their realm. Wang Ling surprised the demon frog by accepting the challenge confidently, despite his reputation for avoiding academic pursuits. Aware of Wang Ling's apparent weakness in math, the demon frog asked math-related questions, assuming Wang Ling would struggle. However, Wang Ling astonished everyone by effortlessly answering the questions, revealing his deliberate underperformance in math to conceal his true intelligence. 
In the next question, the demon frog mentioned the three-body problem, a complex concept in physics and space science. Instead of offering a theoretical explanation, Wang Ling chose to demonstrate the answer physically by manipulating planets. Witnessing this, the demons mistakenly credited the planetary movement to the demon frog, strengthening their belief in his power. However, the demon frog grew anxious as Wang Ling's actions could lead to disastrous outcomes by bringing the planets dangerously close to Earth. Therefore, the demon frog yielded to Wang Ling's answers to prevent any potential destruction. After correctly answering two questions, Wang Ling asked the demon frog to pose the final question. Acknowledging Wang Ling's remarkable intelligence and knowledge, the demon frog asked a question completely unrelated to human understanding, his own date of birth. Seeing Wang Ling struggle with the question, the demon frog became angry, convinced that Wang Ling and his companions had never truly considered him a friend. Determined to reclaim his title as the Demon King, he transformed into his original form and engaged in battle with Wang Ling, despite knowing he had little chance of victory. Despite Wang Ling's attempts to explain, the demon frog remained unmoved by any reasoning and launched a relentless attack. The demon frog, possessing the ability to manipulate time, believed he could defeat Wang Ling by rewinding time whenever he faced defeat. At one point, he even turned Wang Ling into a baby, but even as an infant, Wang Ling managed to defeat him with a single punch. Despite this setback, the demon frog persisted, using all his power to trap Wang Ling in the end of time. When Wang Ling woke up in the end of time, he heard the demon frog lamenting his losses and reflecting on his life in the human world. Touched by the demon frog's sadness, Wang Ling hugged him and encouraged him to come back with him, promising that their friends were waiting. Eventually, Wang Ling broke free from the end of time and defeated the demon frog once again. Upon returning to the human world, Wang Ling disclosed that he had created a new world for the demons to inhabit after destroying their original realm. He opened a dimensional portal, allowing the demons to enter the new world and live peacefully. Meanwhile, the demon frog decided to remain in the human world, embracing his role as Wang Ling's loyal pet dog. After the turmoil, Zhao Yi decided to hold Liang Ji and her family accountable for their role in the chaos caused by the demons. He intended to bring them to the Seven Star Squad headquarters to face the consequences of their actions. The conclusion of the story shows the residents of Young Island rebuilding their homes in the aftermath of the volcanic eruption. Guo Hao and Chan Chao choose to stay on the island for a few days to aid in the reconstruction efforts. Meanwhile, Sun Rong approaches Wang Ling, who successfully retrieves the Sun family's magical staff and returns it to Sun Rong restoring the treasured heirloom to its rightful owner. So the moral of the story is never trust a demon who's bad at math, or you might end up in a cosmic battle for the ages.